Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Marco and today we are watching Attack on Titan Season 4 Episode 22. Man, Sundays never felt better. There was so much to talk about after previous episode. That was crazy, man. And if we didn't have enough tragic stories in Attack on Titan, it was inevitable that one day we would learn about the Amir and her past and how Titans came to be and the episode delivered. It did not disappoint. I can say for sure that Ymir has one of the most tragic backstories in this show. And it's really crazy because one of the main themes of the show is the world is cruel, right? The cruelty of this world and it's how it all started. So we learned that Ymir actually wasn't Eldian. She was from another village. They were just minding their own business, living their lives. And one day Eldian tribe arrived and basically destroyed their village and enslaved those people. There was the scene when they showed uh, one guy getting his tongue ripped off and I wasn't able to quite process it during the past episode, but it seems like all of the slaves got their tongues chopped off and hence why they wasn't speaking. They were just pointing fingers at Ymir when the king asked uh, who freed the pig, man. It's crazy to think about that all because of that pig. Talk about disastrous butterfly effect, man. That's so fucking insane. <laughs> there was one of the comments saying, I swear to God, if Eren freed this pig. <laughs> but anyway, back to Ymir and her story. Really, really tragic, man. The way King said, you are free. And they started chasing her to the forest, shooting arrows at her. She lost her eye. She got hurt in the leg. She was barely able to move. And there was one shot, really interesting one, in the forest while she was running away. Her blood falls onto the flower petals. And the flower had nine petals and one of them was bloody. Which can imply, I guess, that it might be Attack Titan-like. Her desire for freedom and for vengeance. And when she fell down... Inside of that tree, that creature showed up and I have to admit that I did not know about that creature before I saw this episode. The creature is called Hallucigenia or something, I don't know, but I read a lot about it after the episode and thanks to you guys, I really appreciate it. You told me about it and about the tree Yggdrasil, right, and the Nord mythology. I was really having a fun time reading all that. It's still quite a bit of mystery. Why did that creature approach Ymir? Was it her will to live? Did the creature take pity of Ymir? Or it was just meant to be? Or a random coincidence? Who knows? Another interesting debate I saw was when Ymir became a titan, her wounds regenerated, right? And we assumed that she was the one responsible for regenerating titan shifters inside of pets, making their body parts out of sand and everything, right? And then that begs the question, well, how did she regenerate? Some people are saying that she even didn't regenerate, that her wounds were healed by the king and that's why she died while being stabbed with the spear. But I don't really know. I would like to believe that he lost her will to live, just like uh, with Reiner in Marley when he wasn't able to regenerate. And another question is, if she had three daughters with King Fritz and all subjects of Ymir came from those three daughters, how come there is this royal blood thing? Wouldn't all Eldians have the royal blood, right? So maybe it has to do something with founding titan passing on rather than actual blood if one of the daughters had founding titan and others didn't so that daughter that had the founding titan that's how royal 
family came to be, right? Ymir was a kind, kind girl, kind child that didn't know any better and even after getting the power of literal god, the power of titans, she didn't resist the king because she didn't know any better. She had that slave mentality and she was a child after all. In her head, going against king is something impossible. And the worst part is, after she died, she was stuck in the pets for 2000 years. And when Ymir appeared inside of pets, that's the first time the tree, the tree started forming, implying probably her daughters. And that's how that tree over the time grew more and more and more branches appeared and she's taking care of it, of her children. It's so sad, man. She was waiting for Eren, for someone to finally recognize her as another fellow human being rather than treating her like a slave and when Eren asked were you the one who led me here man it's so fucking powerful it almost feels like Eren is embodiment of her frustration and agony that piled up over all this time insane story there is a good chunk of episodes left which i'm really glad so we will learn more. I already rumbled way too much, guys. I did watch the ending of season 2 that you guys recommended me. And the amount of foreshadowing. I saw those episodes from season 2. And then I saw that ending. Man, what the hell? He planned out so far ahead. It's literally mind-blowing. Okay, guys, I'm ready for the next episode. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Let's go. Okay guys, episode number 22 of season 4. Let's go. Oh god, the whole world is trembling because of the freaking rumbling. Yeah, I remember Reiner screaming Gabi's name. Oh my god. The world wants to exterminate my people and not just on the island. What a heartbreaking story, man. Look at Historia. Oh, and that shot, man. So fucking scary. He looks savage there. Oh my god. That's Annie's father. Yeah, all Eldians in the world. Holy shit. Imagine the fear, bro. All of their families, of the warriors' families, man. Impacts your memories and knocks you out. Yeah. That happened to Eren as well, right? Jan and Connie. Yeah, they were close. They were close, yeah. Oh my god, he's out, man. He got hit by the wall. <sighs> you said it. One person that shouldn't have that power is you. He knew. Escape airships, but escape where? Oh my god. Yeah, exactly, you're the safest on Paradise. Jesus Christ. We can't. No one can stop him now. Wow, Gabi, what the fuck are you doing? What on earth can you do? Oh, she's going for Falco. Oh my god. Yep, Falco is with them. Now Eldians... I mean, technically only Eren is becoming the devil. <sighs> I'm afraid not. It is. It is, and I think that Eren knows. 
ストリアを犠牲にすることを拒んだつまりエランは俺たちのために敵が一部に死ぬ That's his goal, that's what he said. Oh my god, they are showing this episode, bro. I remember this. He's willing to become the devil for their sake. Oh my god. Yeah, they're eating. They don't choose. Yeah, he's a titan shifter now, although he's not experienced. Oh my god! What the fuck? I forgot about Connie's mother. その子は戦士候補生でライナーら戦士隊の弟分だとになるもうマーレが滅ぶのならこれ以上ライナーたちと殺し合いを繰り返すことはないんだだから俺の母ちゃんはどうでもいいってことかOh god, no! Holy shit! Oh my god! Yeah, you guys should not be arguing right now. What the fuck? I don't want this to be Irwin and Armin situation all over again. Did he really dip with Falco? Kuni is not thinking rationally at all. We don't quite know what happened to Zeke. That thing from Eren went flying to him. Oh my god, the titans entered the building. Oh my god! Is that Niall? Oh my god, this is so fucked up, Kaya! What is happening, guys? It's Gabi! <laughs> Gabi said her! Oh my god, this is brilliant! <laughs> Let's go, Gabi! Oh my god, this reminds me of Sasha! The way she stopped the titan with the arrow, but poor Niall though! Oh my god, thank you for this! The redemption, oh my god! Wow, that was amazing, bro. But it's so fucking sad because it's Nile, man. This is exactly what needed to happen. The best possible scenario between Kaya and Gabi. This is so crazy that it went full circle. Just like Sasha did that day, Gabi saved Kaya right now. So, so fucking good, man. I didn't expect this at all. So, this will be enough for both of them to understand that the cycle needs to end. And I think that Kaya will let go of her revenge after this, for sure, man. The way that Gabi jumped and put the rifle inside of Niall's mouth, man, it reminded me when Sasha stabbed the titan who was eating Kaya's mom, Connie's father, right? That scene was so good, man. I'm so glad that they did this. But what the fuck is going on with Connie? He really took Falco. He wants to defeat Falco to his mom. I don't think that's a good idea. Okay, guys. So clearly, he like he loves his mom. He wants to save his mom. There is nothing bad in that. But we need to look at the bigger picture. And I immediately, I immediately got reminded of Midnight Sun episode. What the hell? I don't want to go through this all over again. Please, no, please. On the other hand, story-wise, I'm glad that Connie is getting these moments. I'm really glad about it. And I said that it was foreshadowed kind of when he, when he had kind of the explosion of emotions on, on Yankupon saying that I'm sick of and I'm sick and tired of being betrayed. And of that, he lost his family. He lost his second half, Sasha. He lost many friends and he got betrayed many times. It's hard for everyone, but I don't think that him taking Falco to feed him to 
his mom is a good idea. I just don't think that's a good idea. As Armin said, that would only continue the cycle because people care for Falco, like Gabi and obviously Reiner and the others and warriors. That's the beauty of this show because you need to put yourself into every character and see uh, how tough actually it is. It is his mom after all, but for me as a viewer, I don't think that it's a good idea. Let's see what do we have here. Anti-Titan rifle, okay. A large caliber single shot rifle developed for use against Titans, uh, debuting in the surprise attack of Paradise Island. It's powerful enough to bring down a Titan with a hit to its name, but the rifle's utility is questionable. Its size, weight, and significant recoil makes it a liability to the shooter. And we saw Gabi getting hurt because of the uh, recoil and because of the force, man. She was bleeding because of this gun. It's so freaking hard to use. Okay, guys, I'm ready to continue. Let's go. Rest in peace, my boy Niall. Holy shit, Gabi. Please don't. Okay, we are finally here. Oh my god, Nicolo. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good idea. Everyone is doing it for her sake, man. This is so amazing. <laughs> this guy, bro, this is the best person in this show, man. You are not devils. <laughs> wow! Wow! You poor child. There is one in everyone. Well said, Nicola. Wow, some wise words from Nicola right there. Escape the forest. Inspired by Mr. Bros. Who is it? Oh my god, they brought this OST back. Fuck yeah. Don't tell me it's Kit. Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah! Yeah, the one you beat the crap out of. What a fucking chat. This is the barricades, right? Oh my god! This is amazing right now. Whew. Just like the old times. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh fuck yeah! Oh shit, this brings back memories, bruh. The Oh my god! He did so much for us, bro. You have to... Let's fucking go, bro. Oh, is that Luis? <laughs> oh, because... Uh... <laughs> Of course! Oh my god! Look at the Ackerman go! <laughs> oh shit! Ah, these are all our people, but... You gotta do what you have to do. Wow, that was amazing, guys. What the hell? 
we got rid of the Marley soldiers and of the Titans. And you can just sit back and watch the hell. Yeah, man. Yeah. Unfortunately. It everyone... Oh, fuck is alive. <laughs> Look at this motherfucker, bro. <laughs> he reminds me of Reiner in that regard, <laughs> of surviving impossible shit, bro. Oh my god, she will find out about Falco. Oh god, Connie. Of course. Forget anything regarding Eren at this point. Oh my god. Oh my god! And he's back, baby! Oh my god! Yeah, he... He did say that he's undoing hardening! Amazing. Simply amazing. Amazing episode. Just like every episode of this goddamn show. Rest in peace, Commander of Military Police, Nile, and Commander of Garrison. Pixies, man. Two goats went out this episode. I guess Niall will be reunited with his friend Irvin and they will have a lot to talk about. And I really like what they did for Pixies. And they showed Armin and the others thinking back about how much Pixies helped us in the past, bro. He was a really amazing leader and very wise. And he helped us so freaking much. So it was very sad to see but what can you do? It had to be done. The death of Nile was definitely done very symbolic and very similar to how Sasha saved Kaya. And I'm so freaking glad that this went full circle. Gabi saved Kaya just like Sasha did. And that was her redemption. And Kaya is looking at her with different eyes right now. They both understood so since that conversation between falco kaya and gabi to this right now that's amazing i'm so glad and back in marley did you ever thought that gabi would say one day that i am the devil man talk about development i really really like gabi man i am so glad that she acknowledged that both sides are wrong and the way that everyone stood up for Gabi and Nicolo, man, Nicolo bringing up words of Mr. Bros about escaping the forest, man, so good. So Gabi was talking with Reiner, Reiner's armor and hardening disappeared thanks to Eren and he's badly injured, he got hit by the chunks of the wall and he's not able to fight anymore at least not at this moment and gabi was saying how they need to stop eren and reiner obviously said we can't how do we do that which i agree it seems impossible and reiner was saying to gabi that they should escape and gabi was right escape where where do we escape the whole world is about to get fucking flattened bro and then we had that interesting conversation between Armin, Mika, Sajan and Connie on the roof. Falco is with them, just like Reiner assumed. Jan was saying that Eren is sacrificing whole world in order to save his friends and his people, which is the case. Armin is right. It's a genocide on unimaginable scale and he is right. Nobody is denying that, not even Eren, that's my guess. It's simply his ideology. He's, him and Zeke is 
I am special because I am born into this world against if only I haven't been born into this world. And Connie, oh Connie man, I like Connie but I don't think that we need this at this fucked up moment man. So Connie really took Falco and went by himself, that's so messed up and Armin said that Falco is like a little brother to all of the warriors and that it will continue the cycle of hatred and he's right but Connie was saying do you know how painful it is every time I went back to see my mom to see her suffering like that in that titan form but to be perfectly honest guys I really 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 hope that Connie doesn't do it I really hope so. Falco is probably the last person that should die in this fucking show, man. Falco and Mr. Bros, man. <laughs> Those two. Man, the scene when they showed cadets being scared uh, because titans are breaking in, uh, breaking the building. And they showed that specific cadet with the glasses. That's the one who was proudly saying that he thinks that Jaegerists are doing a great job and that he doesn't need training for Kit. And what do you know, Kit comes to his rescue even though they brutally beat him up that time. This is like basically the third time he's saving them. First time was by, by covering for them, by saying no matter how many of you come and attack me you can do a shit. The second time when he got released from the cell when he said, oh, it's nothing, I brawled with the bear, and this time he actually saved their lives from the titans, man. He, Shadis, is a fucking Chad, and I really like that guy. The, <laughs> but the OST that they played, the action in this episode, it reminded me of the previous seasons, of season 2, to be precise, and the battle of Odgard Castle, and the stuff with Ymir and Historia, and the barricades ost it was simply amazing and the way the mappa animated it it was so amazing to watch we saw also that flock survived that he's okay he's a tough cookie he won't go down so easily and he was pointing gun at yelena's head and saying that she's under arrest or something but who the fuck cares anymore and on yankupon felt like shit man after all the troubles they went through his people and his family will get trampled on and during the episode I wanted to say about Onyankopon that if only more people thought the way he is thinking everything would be better right uh, the god wanted to spice things up with different races to be more interesting right his philosophy is that so I couldn't agree anymore it's kind of sad to see that but it is what it is and when Gabi found out that Falco was taken by Connie to become a titan food man oh that was so fucking sad bro she asked them to try and stop Eren she was asking couldn't Eren transform them back to humans and when they brought the hardening that the hardening was undone it clicked in Armin's brain and we transition into the scene of a certain blonde female laying down <laughs> and it's freaking Annie, she's finally back. But one thing is for sure, she will definitely try to oppose Eren because of her father. They are all doomed, all the people outside of Paradise are doomed, so really insane episode guys. So the things we are not sure about right now is whereabouts of Zeke, Levi, Anji, we didn't see Eren in this episode as well. I'm really curious where are we heading, what will, what will be the rest of the show. Surely they won't be only killing all the people in the world without anyone trying to prevent it somehow. I really have no clue what to expect but one thing is for sure and that is that this show is amazing. I really can't wait to see the next episode. I want to thank you everyone for watching. 
If you like my reactions, please consider subscribing, leave a like or comment, all that good stuff as always. I have a Patreon page where I post my full length reactions. If you are interested, check it out. The link is in description. I will be seeing you very soon with another video. Until then, take care and have a nice day guys. See ya.